I'm in my girlfriend's Trans Am WS6 convertible on my way to go get a gallon of Asian vehicle antifreeze or long life antifreeze. I was told the Prius needs uh, the orange stuff and not the green stuff and pretty much everything else we have uses the green stuff. So on my way to get some of that right now. It's kind of weird getting out of the Prius, getting into this car, which is an LS1 and it has a little more oomph. It sounds really glorious. Oof. Wonder if I could put an LS1 with a six speed in the Prius. Well, let's get going. What we're going to do today is change out a uh, coolant flow valve or coolant control valve. If you have seen an error code of P1121, P1121 on your Prius, that's what it's about. Now, there are two things in there that are a bit confusing. There's one called a water inverter pump. The water inverter pump is a totally different thing from the control valve, as you'll see in the video here. They're both really easy to change, and the argument could be made that maybe you change both at the same time, even if just one of the codes went off, but that's up to you. Let's go get this coolant, and let's go back to the house and get it done. I promise it'll be quick and painless. Okay, we're changing out a coolant valve on a Gen 2 Prius. That's 2004 to 2009. It's really easy. All you're going to need is a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. If you look down inside here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little bracket. My finger's on the end of it. That's the 12, and then on the side there, there's a 10. You'll be able to find it pretty easily. First, we're taking this bolt out and this bolt out, and we're going to kind of lift up on this inverter. That'll give us enough room to grab the other one out of there and put the new one in. I popped an impact socket up under this side. The inverter lifts right up. It's not very heavy at all, but you can put a 2x4 or whatever you want down in there. But we're trying to make it so we can have access to that little critter with the white plug on it right there. That is the coolant control valve. You will be spilling a little bit of fluid as you take these hoses off. The bottom one's more than the top, but what you can do is stick that top one kind of on the other side of those wires. Keep the hoses high and they will leak less if you don't feel like pinching them off. Well, it went as planned. Pulled it straight through this little area right here. Just kind of wiggled around everything and it wound up coming out. It's going to be kind of oily and greasy like antifreeze is. I haven't lost all that much, but... Anyway, this one's coming out, the new one's going in, same place. There you have it, the nut back on the top one, the bolt back in on the side, it is plugged in, all three hoses are on. Now, take this out of here, gently remove this, I'm going to have to take two hands here. Get your two bolts that came out of here before, get them started by hand just so you know that's where it's supposed to be. And then tighten them down with your socket or your wrench. Finally, depending on how much fluid you lost, check this here, make sure it's full. If not, you gotta buy an entire gallon that I'm aware of. I don't think you can get any less than that, but it'd be nice to have it on hand anyway. We're going to make sure that this is cold, not even close to warm. That's a little low. So we're gonna go get some uh, antifreeze that's the long life style or uh, also known as Asian vehicles, make sure you ask the person at the parts store to make sure you're getting the right one. Nothing green. It's orange. Kind of an orangey red. Holy crap! A gallon of Asian vehicle antifreeze is $23.50 with tax. But that's what's supposed to go in it. And I'm going to try to take care of this car the best I can, so... Oh crap. And you're in one of these and one of those is in front of you you know what you got to do well that sums up the project this is the part i bought this is the part number this is the price got it on amazon mid-june of 2022 all the best to you on your particular project remember you just need a 12 millimeter a 10 millimeter an extension of about a foot and uh, you could probably use a screwdriver and maybe some vice grips or hose clamps not the hose clamps as in like worm clamps, but the ones that kind of tighten down on it and press it so it doesn't leak. Those would come in handy too. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I sure do appreciate you watching my video. Have a great day.